I'm, again, alternating colors on my rows, so I'm going back to red. Totally up to you what you do. Power law says this the following, x to the n to the m. equals x to the n m, x to the n to the m equals x to the n m. Why would this be called power law? Why would this be called power law? What's the definition of a power that we looked at two classes ago, three classes ago? What's a power? the base and the exponent and the answer. We call this, the long version is power to the power. So sometimes you'll hear that power to the power law. This is product law because you are multiplying. When you are multiplying the bases, what do you do with the exponents? Add. When you're taking an exponent to an exponent, or what we call a power to a power, we multiply. That's the difference between product law and power law. Product law, there are two bases you are multiplying. Power law, there is one base that you're raising to a second exponent. So this one has two bases, x is twice. This one has two exponents. Two bases you add, one base, two exponents you multiply. When raising a power to a power, When raising a power to a power, multiply the exponents. When raising a power to a power, multiply the exponents. And so an example could be x squared cubed, x squared cubed. According to our exponent law, we know that should be x to the 6. Let's look at y. Well, what does it mean when I have an exponent of 3? It means take whatever's in the brackets and multiply it by itself three times. So this means x squared times x squared times x squared. That's what that cubed means on the outside. Well, within each of those brackets, what does an x squared mean? x times x. So this first one is x times x, and this second one is x times x, and this third one is x times x. And if I add up all those x's, how many do I have? Six. That's why it's multiplication. What this really means is three groups of two. So if you're a word person, you might want to jot that in there. It means three groups of two. And three groups of two we know is six. You need to really understand the difference between product and power because you're going to mix up when you're adding and when you're multiplying. Okay, so two exponents, one base, you're multiplying. Two bases, you're adding. Can I flip? So with some actual numbers rather than just those x's, let's compare these. This means two times, or sorry, three times three, and this means three times three times three times three. So if there's two threes here and there's four threes here, how many threes are we going to have? Six. That's why we're adding in this case. So this is product law. This one means four groups of two. So I have two threes and two threes and two threes and two threes, and how many threes am I going to have? Eight. That is power law. First one is product law. Second is power law. Product law, power law. Product law, power law. We're going to practice just power law. This is two groups of five, and if I have two groups of five twos, how many twos do I have? Ten. Again, I'm going down the columns, not side by side. 
This means four squared squared, so that's two groups of two. So how many fours do I have if I have two groups of two? Four. Notice the base didn't change x to the 2 to the negative 4. This is when it gets crazy because it's hard to envision negative 4 groups of 2. That's why we have product or power law. It just says take the exponents and multiply. 2 times negative 4, negative 8. 3 to the 2 cubed, that's 2 groups of 3. And how many 3's do I have if I have 2 groups of 3? 6. 3 to the 3 to the 3, love this one with all the 3's. That just means we have three groups of three threes. I'll repeat that, three groups of three threes. How many groups do I have if I have three groups of three? So I have three to the nine, because I'm going to have nine of them in all those groups. Y to the six to the two. Power law says we take the six and two and multiply, and that becomes 12. Before you turn the page, look at the product law examples. Look at the power law examples. You need to understand which one it is if the question doesn't tell you. What's the difference? Well, it's the number of bases. So if we look at here, how many sixes do we have way up in this first example? We have two. How many bases do we have in all of these examples? One. So this has two bases. You add one base, you multiply. I'm going to repeat that in case you're a wordy person. When there's two bases with product law, you add. When there's two bases with product law, you add. If the question has one base, that's power law, and you multiply. If there's one base, that's power law, and you multiply. So if we just go back up here for a second, why did we add in this one? because there's two bases, so this was product law. Over here, why did we multiply? Because there's one base and this is power law. If there's two bases, you add. If there's one base, you multiply. I'm going to say that 500 times over the next few days. Let's go to fraction power law, which sounds so scary, but it's not. You started to see some fractions yesterday when we did product law. So here is fractional power law that says x divided by y to the n equals x to the n over y to the n x over y to the n equals x to the n over y to the n. Fraction power law just says if you've got a fraction in the brackets, you can give the exponent to both. So the exponent goes to the numerator and it goes to the denominator. When your base is a fraction, when your base is a fraction, when your base is a fraction, the exponent applies to both the numerator and denominator. Should have made this box bigger. When your base is a fraction, the exponent applies to both the numerator and denominator. So if we look at an example, let's do x divided by 2 to the exponent 3. x divided by 2 to the exponent 3. What's the difference between power law and fraction power law? Well, what's the key word in the title here? Fraction. The minute it's a fraction, it's fraction power law. So according to our law, that says that this should be x to the 3 and 2 to the 3. So we give that exponent to both. If we can evaluate, we typically do. So can we evaluate 2 to the 3? So what's 2 times 2 times 2? So we would simplify this as x cubed over 8.
Well, why? Why does it give to both? Well, if we just look at anything that's cubed, it means multiply that thing by itself three times. So this is going to mean x over 2 times x over 2 times x over 2. And when we multiply fractions, we looked in unit 1, we multiply the tops and we multiply the bottoms. And so the top is x times x times x, and that's just product law. What does product law says if we're multiplying bases, what do we do with the exponents? We add. So there's a little imaginary 1, an imaginary 1, an imaginary 1. How many is that going to be when I add them together? x to the 3. And on the bottom, I have 2 times 2 times 2. How many 2's is that? 3. And then again, we would just simplify x to the 3 over 8. So that's why the exponent applies to top and bottom. You need to be careful in this unit and read the instructions because you're going to mix, mix up simplify and evaluate. What does evaluate mean? Find the number. What does simplify mean? Shorten it, make it smaller, make it more compact. So this one we're just going to use the exponent law. We're not going to go ahead and evaluate because the question didn't ask us. Fraction power law says that if there's a numerator and denominator, each part gets the exponent. So this becomes 2 to the 2, as I wrote that as 2 to the 3. And the bottom becomes 3 to the 2. That's it. That's exponent power law, fraction power law. If the question said evaluate, then we would actually give the numbers. But this question doesn't say it, just says simplify, so we're just going to leave it. 3 to the 4 to the 7, what the heck is going on there? We'll just ignore the 2 for a second. If the 2 wasn't there, which power law, or I just told you, which exponent law would this be? This is power law. So the top is going to be 3 to the 4 to the 7, which is going to be 3 to the 28. Now we're just going to do the bottom. The bottom is going to be 2 to the 7. That's why it's called fraction power law, because sometimes you get power law stuck in there. I just did the top and bottom separately. 4 over 5 to the 3. This is a straight up one. The top is going to be 4 to the 3, and the bottom is going to be 5 to the 3. Okay. Here's a crazy one x squared over x cubed to the cubed. Again, for visual people, sometimes seeing the whole question is scary, so I'm just going to look at the top for now. What law does that look like? That's like power law. So we know if there's one base and two exponents, we multiply. So the top's going to be x to the 6. Now if I just look at the bottom and that 3 on the outside, if you could actually see the bottom, Let's pretend you only saw the bottom. That's also power law. So y to the 3 to the 3, or y cubed cubed, becomes y? 9. Nine. There you go. Thumbs up, thumbs aside, thumbs down. How are we feeling? Good. Worksheet, just like yesterday, shouldn't take you very long to correct it or to finish.